today is all about gems. Get it? Midget gems? It's all about finding the little hidden gems of London you probably don't know about on two wheels. So let's get going. So today is all about the little hidden gems in London. If you've been to London before, you've probably done all the big sites. But if you're coming to London for maybe a second time, or you live around here, there are so many more hidden little gems that you can find, specifically on two wheels. And today, on this beautiful day, we're gonna go on a little journey. We're gonna find a few little hidden gems. I mean, there are many, many gems to find in London, but this is a pretty good little selection. And you see here, we start off in Little Venice. Now this is a beautiful little place that's hidden behind Maida Vale and Paddington Station. If you can see here, it's full of little canal boats and it's where three little canals meet in this little trifecta and it was said to have been given its name by Lord Byron because of its similarities to the Venetian canals. Not only is it a beautiful little spot and it's really quiet hidden away in London, but it's also surrounded by these beautiful Regency style buildings. And when lockdown's not normally on, it's a beautiful place to come because it's full of little cafes and shops. You can get a nice drink and rest and calm and get away from the busyness of normal London. One of the great things about this area is that all of the canal boats are lived in year round. This means that people take huge pride in their canal boats and you'll see them repainting and planting and it's always a beautiful little thing that people take huge amounts of pride in where they live, especially in a lovely area like this. Now as lovely as this place is, it's slightly far out of the centre of London. So next, we're going to start travelling into the centre of London and see what other hidden gems we can find. So I'm now in this beautiful hidden park right in the centre of the city. It's called Postman's Park and it was given its name because the local postman used to come here on their lunch um, from the old general post office that's now no longer here. However, today it's more commonly known for the Watts Memorial which was built in the 1900s. And Watts was a radical socialist with huge sympathies for the dreadful conditions that was given to the urban poor. And surrounding the edge of this park, there are these glazed plaques that uh, commemorate those that gave their lives trying to help the poor that were living in pretty dreadful conditions. If you go up to each of the plaques, you can see that there are little stories about those that have suffered. And there are pretty horrific stories about children drowning and fires and lots of death. Um, but it's a lovely quiet park and to get out of the, the busyness of the city and have your lunch here is just definitely a thing you have to do. Behind me here are the old ancient Roman walls of London. I used to work around it all the time, I didn't really take much notice. But looking into it, these walls were first constructed in 200 AD and lasted as the main form of defence for London for over 1700 years. These walls were the largest construction project ever undertaken by the Romans. They stretched for two miles from Tower Hill in the east all the way to Blackfriars in the west. And they still stand today in lots of parts of London that this is the main part that you can see it. oldest markets in all of London. It dates back to the 14th century when it was an old corn market. Today this structure, this ornate structure, was built in 1881 by Sir Horace Jones. It's full of lots of little beautiful shops selling cheese and wine and beer and lots of cool things. Um, it was also used in Harry Potter for Diagon Alley. incredible mural you can see behind me is a mural that depicts the Battle of Cable Street. This was built in 1983 
to commemorate the battle which happened in 1936. In 1936, this area was home to a huge number of Jews, and on the 4th of October that year, Oswald Mosley and the British Union of Fascists decided to put a march into this area. A 20,000 large group of anti-fascist counter-protesters came into the area and built barricades to stop the protest. They ended up clashing with 7,000 Metropolitan Police, some of which were mounted that were there to help protect the protest. The counter-protesters fought back with anything they had. Rocks, sticks, rotten food, and on the edges of the streets, women would throw their chamber pots over the police in order to stop them. Um, in order to stop the bloodshed, Oswald Mosley decided to cancel the protest but still some 150 protesters were arrested and badly beaten by police. It's an incredible mural depicting some really dark times in our recent history. Ooh, that was super fun. I hope you enjoyed going on this journey with me and thanks to all my friends for all their ideas. If you guys have any suggestions of where you'd like to go, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe as you'll get a little notification when I next bring out a video. I'll also leave uh, a map at the end of this video showing you all the places that we've been and I'll put some links in the description below. Cheers!